form gradually getting larger and changing its shape into the steady state waveform. I've placed a label at every second or third of these first waveforms. Labels could be placed, or should be placed, as close to the zero crossings at the beginning of the waveforms as possible. This should capture the attack variations fairly well. You see that I have added an underscore two character. This might be used in a situation where the waveform is not a periodic waveform, it's not reoccurring. Most of the time you won't be able, won't have to use these. Uh, as the waveform becomes more and more of a steady state, you could just use some label followed by underscore one. Now as the waveforms gradually become more of the same shape, the labels are placed farther and farther apart. If I hit the up arrow key, I should go out to the next one hundredth of a second in the file, and you'll see that the labels are getting farther and farther apart. We could change the horizontal by hitting our PF4 key to show more labels. The crossfade times that I mentioned earlier will be the attack times of each of the timbre frames when they arrive at the Sinclair keyboard. And we'll match the actual times between each of these labels. Start your first analysis with, as a suggestion, no more than 15 or 20 labels. Extremely good timbres have resulted from even fewer labels. Now there's another step I must do before performing the resynthesis. I must find out the exact pitch of the sample. We saw how the spectral display earlier provides this information. To prepare the spectral display for the best look at the sample, I need to change a few set parameters. First type set FFT 9000. This will automatically place the FFTs at 8192. And then type set length at one. This will also automatically give the correct value for the FFT analysis. And as one other item, to make it more convenient for me to see the fundamental pitch of this particular trumpet, I'm going to set the range at 2, meaning 2 kilohertz. So we'll end up seeing between 0 and 2 kilohertz when we run the analysis. Now I'll type envelope for envelope display. This is the first display you see when you're recording the entire sound file. Then taking the right or left arrow key, moving out to some place in the sample, uh, uh, past the attack of the note and type SPE for spectral. Now since we have set the FFTs up to their finest resolution, it will take about 20 seconds for the display even to begin to give the analysis. When it begins, you'll see probably on the two kilohertz display here a couple of peaks. The first one that you'll see would represent the actual pitch of the fundamental. Here it is, there's two. I guessed right. Now, should you move your cursor out at this time, before you see an OK in the top center of the screen, it simply means that the computer is calculating the analysis all the way out to 25 kilohertz. Now I'll move my cursor out to the first peak, or fundamental. This represents the note that was played on the horn. There'll be a small horizontal line which would follow the individual points in this analysis. In the box at the right now that I've stopped at the fundamental will be the pitch class of the steady state portion of the sound. This was mentioned a bit earlier. This next in the horizontal line saying frequency on the far right in parentheses is a number representing the actual pitch of the note. It's deciphered here as 4.0509, meaning the fourth octave, the fifth semitone, an F natural, and some amount uh, sharper than the F natural. Now this number is quite valuable to you in either resynthesizing or in simply tuning up your samples to concert pitch and the same command covers both items. I type set octave. This is a command, one of your set commands on the set menu in the lower right section of the screen, octave, and I type in the number on the screen for the, uh, on the analysis, 4.0509. Now the resynthesis program is going to use this pitch when it resynthesizes the sample. Then I activate the resynthesis program now that I've added my labels and told the system what the fundamental pitch was by typing the command synthesize. 
The analysis program is now active. This is the analysis menu. You may change many things here, but it is not necessary at this moment. For instance, if there is no vibrato in the sample, you could choose to have it followed by changing no to yes at the line that reads use raw, meaning raw pitch. Now following the instructions on the menu, I'll press keypad one to begin the analysis. Remember the keypad is at the right of your terminal uh, keyboard. The computer will now resynthesize the sample. You'll see various displays during the analysis. The waveforms that you've marked with the labels, here's the one from A1 to A2. A resynthesized waveform and a quick picture of the harmonics as they would be represented uh, in earlier timbre displays. You see at the bottom of the screen, analysis status, computing the harmonic coefficients. In this particular sample, it's going quite quickly. Uh, it's been our experience that you'll see lower notes that uh, are you resynthesize will take much longer to resynthesize. When the analysis is complete, the system will return to the original analysis menu. Now, uh, as you'll see, as it returns in the right of the menu, you would have had several options to choose from. As I mentioned before, taking or uh, a selection of whether or not you're using the raw pitch, if there was any pitch movement in the original sample. At this moment, during this analysis, everything in the sample is being analyzed, whether you have selected it or not. Later on, you can go back and select different variations of what might have been in the analysis. If you are very critical about your resynthesis, you might decide to listen to every possible item that was analyzed, phase angles in individual portions of, t uh, of the sample, very tiny variables. Now the system should be pretty well through. Here is our original analysis menu. And there's a message at the bottom that says analysis complete. Press PF2 to overlay to the synclavier. Now rather than do that, I'm going to select just one option on the menu, of which there are many, and you can experiment with these. Under the left section of the screen, under system commands, it says KP2 for save, analyze, timbre. KP meaning the keypad for any of these commands. I touch the keypad 2. It says enter the name of the file to store the timbre in, or return to cancel. If I say, uh, let's say, trmp1 and hit return, this will confirm now that I have 12 timbre frames successfully written to a file called trump1. Now, the right hand of the screen analysis parameters, I could change these parameters if it had any pitch movement Something called a pitch window could affect just how much you'd like to track it, if you like. Uh, you can turn on or off the raw pitch idea by simply hitting the space bar. And you could choose in your system up to 128 harmonics to analyze a, re a sample for resynthesis. In that case, it is going to take a bit longer. Or you can go back and set it to something lower and, and listen to it several different ways. Phases are something at, at, at points uh, on some samples, quite critical to the sound, you might choose to listen to it with or without the phases on the individual harmonic coefficients. And one important item on the bottom, analysis parameters, is the harmonic noise floor. If you had a sample that might have been badly recorded, you could choose before or after, uh, or uh, in many variations of listening to the, a resynthesized sound, a different noise floor uh, the, uh, to say that anything lower than uh, a number, which would reflect percentage, 5 for 5%, uh, would be ignored. Anything that was found down at that level would simply not be picked up in the analysis of the resynthesized sounds. Now, the real-time program can be then called up, now that we have saved this analyzed timbre, by touching PF2, as you see under System Commands in the left. If I hit the PF2 key, we would then overlay to the synclavier.
the real-time program is now active. The resynthesized sound is now active on the keyboard. The resynthesized timbre has now been placed on the keyboard, and I'll save this one to the disc. Here's the trumpet. However, I still need to make some finishing touches on it. I placed the last frame in this sound, or the last label, at a moment where the timbre had not yet gone to zero volume. So you can hear this as it's, you can hear this as it is resynthesized. In this case, I'll just reach up and hit the sustain button in the volume envelope and remove it to zero. It had been at 100. Now that's a fair representation of the original sample. Now I can save it to the disc, hold down the right button and an entry button and pick a location. Entry number two. You have now seen and heard the major areas of operation in the sample to disk system. You have learned how to sample a sound and store it in a sound file on the disk and how to play it back. You have seen how sound files can be used in real-time performance and have seen a demonstration of the polyphonic sampling option. Next, you have seen some of the unique things that the sample to disk and SFM software can do with sounds, such as spectral analysis, sound modification, and sound editing. Finally, you saw a brief example of the SFM analysis program. Remember, there are many additional features and details about the sample to disk system. For example, there are ways of creating your own digital filters. Refer to Binder 3 for all details. This completes the set of three video cassettes, but it is just the beginning of your adventure with the Synclavier digital music system. Good luck.